take Miss Zuzu on that. That's two <laughs> refresher points for all of you who recognize it. Uh, you ever played Borderlands 2? Yes. yes. I was those psychos in that. I was the original Toonami Tom for Cartoon yeah. Tom. Yeah. Yeah. I raised you bitches. <laughs> but I'm also a comic book artist. I was actually published as a comic book artist before I became a voice actor. Uh, and then a um, really interesting thing happened, and I think she's coming to this panel. Do you guys know who Wendy Peeney is? There she is right now. <laughs> Wendy is my old mentor and also not old. Sorry. <laughs> Wendy, come up on stage for a second. Woo! And then stay. <laughs> I asked Wendy to come up here because this panel is actually called We Shadows, right? Yeah. Which is a webcomic I did for a while, but I'm not doing that now. I'm doing a new webcomic, so I thought, let's just turn this into a webcomics panel in general. Now, Wendy Peeney is the creator of a series called Elf Quest. You guys know that series? Yeah. If you don't, you need to check it out. They're selling it down at the Dark Horse table right now, and I am her colorist on the series. Oh, boy, is he yeah. good. And boy, am I good, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> And Did I, you tell him how we met? I was just going to get to that. Oh, it's the best <laughs> That's story. That's exactly what I was about to tell. It's the best story. Well, see, I, I was a struggling cartoonist for many years. I was a self-publisher um, back in the old days before most of you were born. And uh, then I, I've been a theater major in college. Woo! And, and woo! Yay, theater! Yay, <laughs> <laughs> theater back That's us. Um, and then uh, I had an, they had uh, auditions for Dragon Ball Z in Dallas. So I thought I'd give it a shot. And I landed the part of Krillin. Well, suddenly I kind of stumbled onto a career here, right? Well, the first convention they take us to is Comic-Con. <laughs> now, I've been to Comic-Con before as a publisher. And I remember back then, this was before manga was so popular. This was 2001, wasn't it? Or two? <sighs> when we met, it was 1999. Oh, was it 9 oh, no, I think it was 2000, at least. When, did, when was 9-11? <laughs> that was the year I worked for you, that 9-11 happened. Yeah. 2001. 2001? Yeah. So we met in 2000. We met in 2000. So they sent us to Comic Con in 2000. Uh, I had been there as a publisher. Back then, like I said, if you were publishing black and white before manga was really popular, the guys would come to your table and they'd just peel back the cover enough to see if it's black and white or color. And you go, eh, hey, that's black and white. And they would walk away. Did you ever run into that in your black and white oh, days? Yeah, many times. Why? Because, I don't know, now manga is so prevalent that uh, you, it doesn't matter if you like it. Yeah, now black and white is prestige. Yeah, it's acceptable it, it, prestige, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Right, you're like, I do too, because you can see the line work. That's really bad for me to say as a colorist, but I prefer the black and white. I'm actually the luckiest ElfQuest fan because I get to see all the line work in black and white before I ruin it with color. <laughs> <laughs> But, now how we met. I was at, we were doing the signing, and me and Chris Sabat, who does, uh, see, gosh, what he does, Piccolo, Piccolo everyone. Vegeta, yeah. Yeah. Yamcha, yeah. even does that monkey, yeah. Bubbles. <laughs> uh, it was with him and Sean Schimmel, the voice of Goku, and Stephanie Nadalny, the voice of Gohan, and we were having lunch, and we were running late to the signing. Now, we were rushing, we had no idea this was going on behind the scenes, but on the Funimation table, Every space was filled with merchandise. Mm -hmm. And so the guy who's running the table asked, I think we asked Richard first. Our, right? this the is Warp Graphics in. booth was directly next to the Funimation booth, and their stuff was starting to spill over onto our table. <laughs> Go and, and so they asked if it would be all right if uh, the Funimation actors signed in the area. I think Richard's first response was, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> because it's expensive uh, table space out there, right? Mm -hmm. And then Wendy said, who wants to sign there? And so the Dragon Ball Z actors, well, it turns out that Wendy, this freak, is totally into Dragon Ball Z. Yeah! 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 into manga years ago. As a matter of fact, ElfQuest is like the very first manga-inspired American comic book. It started in 1977, and nobody had seen that drawing style before. So, yeah. so she's been doing it a long time. and paying. So she, she, was, she knew all about it. We and Dragon Ball Z is the way west. It's Goku. It's it's the story of the Monkey King. Mm -hmm. I knew that from when I was a little kid. So why wouldn't I be a fan of Dragon Ball Z? She actually educated us on this. We had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> the monkey what? The monkey. <laughs> the monkey. 
So, we go up to the table to sign, and I had been reading ElfQuest since I was 14 years old. And people kept saying Wendy Peeney, her name, over and over again. I said, why do you keep saying her name? Is she around here? And so I said, dude, she's right behind you. And I look, and Wendy's over here going, hi! And I went, oh my god, and I just totally fanboy. Oh my god, I love your stuff. And you're so incredible. I've been reading since I was 12. And I'm doing the same thing because I'm a Krillin fan. <laughs> and I'm like, shut up. She's no, really? Me and my dog Chewie take a break every day. And we go and watch Dragon Ball Z. And I went, you've got to be kidding me. Uh -uh. And she totally wasn't. And she started telling us all about it and the legends and how it, where the, uh, the actual legend that inspired the series came from. And it was really cool. Well, then she starts drawing us pictures of our characters with her characters. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> so I knew how, uh, then I found out about the table space and letting us sign in their area. And I had, you know, booth space there myself. And I know how expensive that can be. So to thank Wendy and Richard, I went to my room and I drew her main character, Cutter, talking to uh, Goku, Krillin, and Gohan. Mm -hmm. And I gave empty voice balloons so that each voice actor could say thank you personally to her and gave it back to her. Mm -hmm. And she went, oh, this is really nice. I didn't know you drew. And I said, yeah, I had a few things published. And she goes, do you want to draw for me? <laughs> and like the floor vanished between me and my feet and I was just sort of suspended in midair and I flashed back to 14 years old reading my first elf quest and I think I said or croaked is that a trick question? <laughs> and she said no I, I think you're really on model would you like to do this? I went <laughs> so my mind was blown so I went home and I thought about it and I thought you know I kind of felt my artwork had hit a ceiling, and I've always wanted to study under a master. So I called her up and I said, Wendy, I'm, I'm honored to be drawing this, and I will draw this. But I was wondering if we could change the terms. And I believe you said, do you want more money? And I said, no. I don't want more but I want to be your apprentice. And she said, really? And I said, yeah, you're a master, one of the few we have left. I want to study under you. I've admired you since I was a kid. Well, I, I remember asking you, do you realize what that means? Because yes. it, when, when someone asks you to, they want to be your apprentice, that becomes a, a lifelong obligation for the teacher as well. It becomes an eternal bond between sensei and apprentice <laughs> and, the until life. the apprentice becomes a sensei. Which I'm, I'm still learning. No, okay. I'm still learning. No, no, you can't you're get out of the contract. I'm still learning. <laughs> you're teaching me stuff now. No, I'm not. <laughs> so, yeah, she said, okay, move to Los Angeles. She worked in my studio. And I worked in her studio, and every day I would draw a page. Well, not every day. Sometimes we'd go to the beach. But every, every day I would draw a page. I would give it to her, and she would say, this works, this doesn't work, and this is why. And it was the most amazing learning experience of my life. I learned like 10 years of learning in just one year. Oh. Being under. It was an amazing experience for me. And I had to stop learning. And in the meantime, you kept up all your voice work. I flew back to Texas to do the back voice work. Back and forth. And so on the days when Sean Schemmel would come visit the studio, come visit Stun Sonny at the studio, they would be like partying the night before and they would come in that morning as Goku and Krillin. Oh, <laughs> so they come blasting in the door. <laughs> Kame, 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 Kame! <laughs> we never got any work done on days like that. <laughs> now, Wendy is kind of a beach bum. <laughs> so if I didn't want to work that day, I would look out the window and go, oh, it's so beautiful today. He it would be so nice to be at the beach. And she'd be like, you son of a bitch. All right, <laughs> let's go. And we go to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great experience, and uh, just a great place to learn, and a, and a great learning experience in general. Mm -hmm. Now, this is about web comics, and this, this is the reason I wanted Wendy up here because Wendy also has experience in web comics. If you have not seen her Mask of the Red Death, it, you have to check this out. This is a, a modern telling. Uh, actually, you have to be comic. over eighteen. <laughs> right. It is Yaoi. <laughs> and Yaoi, like. To the extreme. This is the great American Yowie. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Yowie when you go, Yowie! <laughs> I know, remember the first time? 
<laughs> Sonny was following the episodes as they went up every week on, uh, on the web, and, and, and one particular episode, I remember his reaction, he said, I'm going to need therapy! Because <laughs> you were turned on! Well, I didn't say that! <laughs> So it's turned on. I understand why. It's aesthetics. An artist. It has nothing to do with a well hung Antonis. But it really is a good series. And if you are old enough and brave enough to check it out, you should check it out. It's really good. Mask of the Red Death. Mm -hmm. Just look up Wendy Peeney, Mask of the Red Death. Now, she did an interesting thing. That's why I want to talk yeah, to you. Yeah, the reason you're bringing it up is... Yeah, because it's, it stars a webcomic, but she decided... Now, I've seen some uh, anim like flash animation stuff that's done for the web, mm -hmm. and I've seen you know stuff that's done for comics, but what she did from the very beginning, she planned it so you can see it animated online, as well as it would look good in print. Mm -hmm. And so it stands alone in print, it stands alone online as, as an animated thing too. So it's really brilliant. You have to check it out. Mm -hmm. But but onward to where you first decided to do your webcomic. Okay. I had finished drawing Elf Quest and I was directing uh, Loop on the Third. We had just got a series of like 11 movies. And I was writing and directing and acting and I didn't have time for comics anymore. But my friend Jeff, uh, who worked for ElfQuest as well, years ago, said he was going to be at a Dallas convention. I think everybody has worked for ElfQuest. I think, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people have worked for ElfQuest. <laughs> and he said, hey, I'm, I'm going to do this convention in Dallas. Would you like to join? I said, sure. We'll, we'll share a table. Well, I didn't have anything to sell, but a local comic book, art, a, a comic book store had a bunch of uh, the summer special that Wendy and I did together. And so we said, what if you can sell them here? I'll give you half of it. I said, okay, so I put him on the table. Well, a representative of Tokyo Pop came to the table. Oh, Tokyo Pop. Yeah, is that sad, right? Bye bye, Tokyo Maybe Pop. rest in peace. Yeah. Do you know what I like about Tokyo Pop is their translations. Yeah. They, they really read well. They were perfect. So many of the translations read like fan subs, you know? But the Tokyo Pop ones were amazing. I miss it. And you know why they failed? I actually got it from the horse's mouth. Uh, there were all these rumors, but the truth was they. My wife is just dying to talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, the truth was is that they invested all their money into Borders. Oh. And when Borders oh. tanked, oh. they lost over half of their revenue overnight. By this point, Tokyo Pop was a huge monster that required a lot of money to keep going. Well, they couldn't do it anymore, and that's why it folded. I mean, they used to take up a full wall at Borders. Uh, yeah. It, 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 uh, it, it was the place. It was the way place to go. It was like for Funimation for anime. It was you know Tokyo Pop yeah. for manga. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, the guy, a representative of Tokyo Pop, came to the table and he said, "I am an acquisitions editor. I'm looking for talent. Who is Sunny Straight?" And I said, "I am." He goes, "I love your ElfQuest stuff." And I went, "Wow, thank you." And he goes, "Do you have anything for me?" And I said, "No, just flat out. I don't have anything." Uh, I'm too busy and I don't have any ideas or anything. And then my buddy Jeff, Jeff and I, when I lived in Los Angeles, we got drunk together one night. And <laughs> what I do you mean one night? Well, this, this one particular <laughs> night that we got drunk, something interesting happened other than just chasing girls. Uh, it's not all about Anton and his big schlong. <laughs> so I got really drunk and I started telling him about this idea I've had on the back burner for 10 years about this uh, fairy... Uh, named Goat, who becomes the Puck. Uh, you guys know Midsummer Night's Dream? Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, in this story, the Puck is a title, and the old Puck leaves, and somebody else has to take over. And it's this character called Goat, who no one likes. It's basically an ugly duckling story, and how she comes to her home. So uh, I told him about it, and he said, that sounds cool. Uh, send me some pages. I sent him like four pages, and a couple of months later, he hooked me up with an editor, and I got published to do it, which was really cool. Book one came out, uh, it got great reviews. Uh, it was actually nominated by the American Library Association for a Best Graphic Novel of 2008. Yeah. And then uh, book two, they thank you. I get some respect. Uh, and then I did book two, they paid me to do book two, and then they tanked. So they couldn't print it. 
Not the books, the company. Yeah, the company tags, <laughs> and then they couldn't print the books. So they paid me to do a book, which was cool, but I wanted people to see it, you know. Uh, I do comics because I want people to see them. I mean, I make more money uh, working in Funimation as a director and a writer. That's actually a better paying job than doing comic books. But I love comics. That's like so it's in my blood, so I have to do it. So they were also holding on to the rights of everybody's properties. Mm -hmm. And it's in the contract. It said they can hold them indefinitely. They were hoping that they, they held on to these properties. Maybe they can get one to turn into a movie or something like that. And that's not a singular experience. It happens all the yeah, time. James Perry went through. Happens that. all the time. Oh, James, yeah, he's a good friend of mine. He's a good friend of mine. Too. Orange Crows, yeah. Yeah, he's another Tokyo Pop guy. He did something. Now, I was lucky because I, I an, an attorney at Funimation mm -hmm. wanted to work on this kind of contract, and he volunteered it. He said, I'll do your contract negotiations with their lawyer, which was awesome. And I got the best deal that anyone at Tokyo Pop ever got. Um, and one of the things, the stipulations on there was that if they don't get it printed by a certain time after accepting the art, all the rights go back to me. Mm. And I, at first, I, when they said they're holding on to the rights, I went, oh, no. And it took me like six months to remember, wait a minute, there wasn't there a clause? And this contract is huge. That's another thing. If your contract is really big, it's not usually a good thing. The smaller the contract, the better the deal, usually. Mm. But I, I flipped through there, and I found like really small clause says that if it's not printed by a certain time, I get it. So I called him up, and I called Stu Levy, and I said, Stu, that's what the contract says. And he goes, let me see. And he's like, you're right, you're right. So they had six months to print it after that point of being notified. They couldn't because they don't have a company anymore. So I got the rights back. Well, immediately I put it online and uh, became WeShadows.com. And it was constantly voted into the top ten web comics, usually by me nagging people on Facebook to do it. <laughs> that was a campaign. Yeah, it was a campaign that would that go on for a long time. A lot of people missed the campaign. I'm like, I don't miss the campaign. <laughs> it was fun, though. We got to talk to you. I know. It was kind of like having a, a comic strip. Yeah. You know, that was about voting. <laughs> but it was fun to do for a while. And then um, I, I really ran out of time. I started, I, well, also... Something very serious happened. My cousin died. Oh. Yeah, it was like my favorite cousin, and I just wasn't inspired to do anything for about six months. So I just, uh, and plus I started coloring for Health West, and my uh, voice acting jobs had increased. And um, so I was just like, you know what, I'm, I, I'm writing this now as I go along, and that's not good. The book is suffering for it, so I decided to put it on hold. And then about, I'd say about three months ago, I just started coming out of the uh, morning period and all these ideas started cropping up and I had this idea for a new comic book series of superheroes, which I've never had before. And I don't know, Mr. Average was a... He's kind of a superhero. Yes. <laughs> yeah. If you consider a guy in a, with a cue ball for a head and a business suit a superhero. <laughs> but he had powers. But uh, so, and I, did, I realized I didn't have time to to write and draw this, mm -hmm. but I called up my friend Billy, who was a guy I wrote comics with in college. We did a book called The Sex Gophers from Hell. <laughs> yeah. which is, it's about a rock band called The Sex Gophers. <laughs> and uh, I said, do you think you could come up with something with these characters? And the next day he had a full script. And I went, okay, cool. Now all I have to do is just draw it, and draw it at my own pace. So if you go to Lemmy, L-E-M-M-E comics.com you can see my new book it's called Lenny Adams and I stole the name from my wife who has a burle that's her burlesque name she does burlesque under the name Lenny Adams <laughs> well I was like I had this character in mind I, did, I knew what her powers were I knew what kind of person she wanted to be I wanted her to be but I didn't know her name or what she looked like and I was going I thought, well, you know my wife does a lot of burlesque let me look at some of her costumes and I was drawing her costumes and I thought, well, I kind of like her hairstyle. I was like, oh, I just draw her. And then I was like, I screamed to her studio from my studio, honey, can I use Lemmy Adams for my comic book? And she goes, yes! I'm like, okay, it's called Lemmy Adams. Are you beginning to get a kind of a picture of the kind of life this guy leads? <laughs> it's chaotic. He's a, you know, he's, he's one lucky bunny. I mean, it's, it's just one serendipity after another for you, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, I think Chris Savage said to me once, "You are the luckiest son of a bitch I know." <laughs> but I think you also got to be prepared, though. I mean, 
Opportunities come up all the time, but if you haven't put in the years of you know experience and training, you know you can't answer the call. But and also uh, seizing the moment is not about training; it's simply about having an, an instinct to recognize the moment when it's in front of you and seize it. Yeah, and that's just pure instinct. And sometimes it's not even that. It's like uh, like when I drew that picture for you, I wasn't expecting to get hired to draw Elf Quest. No. I was expecting you to go. But you were the moment, and I seized you. You seized the moment. <laughs> I should have been the one seizing that moment. You seized it. You. That was awesome. Yep. But then I did seize the moment because when she did hire me, I was like, uh, no, we can go further with this. I can actually learn from this woman. And so it changed the terms. Now, I know that this is a very busy con. So if you guys have any questions that go beyond web comics or anything like that, I'll be happy to field any questions you have because you may not be able to come to all the panels. I'm going to come back. You, you can ask questions. But yes, I see you have a question already. What is your question? Uh, two. One for other stuff and one for uh, comics. For something like uh, Shadows, how long does it take after uh, writing, editing, drawing mistakes, rewrites, anything like that? How long does it take to get out a chapter? Well, it depends on your, your book deal. We're doing ElfQuest now. Wendy and I are putting out a book every two months, right? Hmm. And um, when I worked for Tokyo Pop, I would average about 20 pages a month, but it was black and white. Right. And um, so that was pretty much, was that, was that your question? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and the yeah. other one was leading into anime, because I know that's going to get there in like a few minutes anyways. But uh, one of the things I always found hilarious in hindsight was after dubbing DBZ, going back into do Dragon Ball, is you played uh, General Blue, and he was a Nazi pedophile who had an attraction to Krillin. And I found that to be the most hilarious thing in hindsight because you play both him and Krillin. I think we changed it in the American version, though. Well, in whatever would be considered uncensored, he was. Right. Yeah, what because would... <laughs> yeah, because that doesn't fly too. Well. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah, that was yeah. airing. General Blue just became network. this guy who's just. Oh, what we did was it wasn't Krillin; it was a kid, though. And what they right. changed it to is like, oh, you look just like my little brother Tommy or something. And so it was just like he was obsessed with this kid because he looked like his brother. Which kind of, yeah, took away the meat of what they were trying to say, but still also made it safe for us to do it. Well, knowing, this, knowing what would be, I guess, the overtones, what exactly was the experience of that like, even after the changes, knowing what that was? Well, that was cool anyway, because I just got to play this over-the-top character who's very effeminate, you know, which I don't usually get a chance to do. I did that one, and I did another one for Oran High School when I played Mizuzu. Um, but, uh, yeah, and, and I personally would probably have an issue with it if we had actually stuck yeah. to a pedophile. Well, theme. pedophilia yeah. is so uncomfortable. Yeah. So uncomfortable. Yeah. Yes? Have you ever heard of the uh, webcomic called Sequential Art? No. It's, uh, is it by Scott McCloud? But he comes out with a, uh, a little strip every two to three weeks, and it's about this artist that is trying to make a living drawing, but he lives with a cat lady and a penguin. Yeah. yeah they can and, get in the way. And it's <laughs> very hilarious. They go on all these different types of adventures and everything, and you can definitely see how the art progresses throughout the series. Like, at first, if you click on the first one, you see how Art, that's his name, is drawn and portrayed, and so is Cat and all them. And you bring up a pretty good point, because I, I like, that's what I like about web comics, is, and also what I liked about independent comics as well, because you can see this progress of growth of an artist. Yeah. Even like in, in Wendy's books, that she oh. started in 79. Oh, yeah. It is amazing. I, I, I recently have, uh, wrote a thing for a book that we're Hopefully we'll see print someday called oh. Line of Beauty. Yeah, don't worry. It, it, it's just getting bigger. That's why it's, it's taking it longer. keep adding more and more writers to it, more and more uh, takes on our, her artwork. But when I was looking at her artwork writing the book, I was noticing, like, paths that she could have taken at one point mm -hmm. with her art and then went another way. And it's just really fascinating to see the decisions. And one of the things was a page that was drawn in a style that she wouldn't reach for another five years, but it was really, it was the page when uh, Skywise is slowly taking the knife and cutting oh, total, his, where he was supposed anime. to have died, yeah. you know, yes. and yes. I, I thought that was really interesting because yes. she originally was going to kill Skywise off, but uh, I think Richard said no way. <laughs> no, because Skywise belongs to Richard. Right, so. It's, but so she said, okay, I'm going to keep him there, but almost it was like 
changing his fate, you know? And it, like, it mustered up all of this, I don't know, it like, almost echoed what her future was going to be. And if you look at that, this page I'm talking about, you can look at it. The style is so close to what she did five years later, more than any other page before or after it. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, that kind of stuff is fascinating. It's like the decisions artists make are these little glimpses into where they're going with it, you know, and may or may not go with it. And that's something you see in web comics very easily. I actually like going back if you, uh, if you read, if you look at the first book of Bleach, where it's at right now, totally different. Same with any type of manga or web, uh, web comic. It's right. Like, it's amazing it's to see that kind of growth. Now, if you're looking like a Marvel or DC, they tend to get people at, who have already had a definitive style or are almost there. And so you, you don't see that growth. And they're not there long enough to see the no, development, no. too. They may be developing as artists, but you don't get to see it. But when you see an independently published series, it is amazing to watch that growth. That's one, uh, that's, I, I, and that's one of the reasons I also like black and white, because you actually see that growth yeah. even more so. And you had a question in the back? Yeah, I had two questions. My first one is, with a web comic, what does it really take for it to be successful, to blow up like, like, like the, the small few that happen? Well, um... That's a good question. Well, first it takes a great idea. And then you've got to make yourself really web savvy. You've got to, you know, learn what it takes to design a, a website, a, a location for your comic to be shown. And then you have to decide whether you want it to be daily or weekly or, or, or whatnot. And it really, really, really helps to have the story all plotted out ahead of time because then you get the, if you know where your story is going, you have the opportunity to do foreshadowing and teasing through the story that will just grab your audience and, and keep them wanting to follow because uh, watching something that's serialized is like following a mystery. And, and each episode, you know, whether it's one page or several pages that you put up uh, on a weekly basis, should, should draw the audience in and make them curious about what's going to happen next. There's nothing more important than to have your audience, you know, like every episode of Dragon Ball Z, you know, it's, it's, it stands alone, but at the same time, questions are posed that you want to know are, what's going to happen next. So you come back for the next episode. Same thing with web comics, same, same thing with any comic. You want to draw the audience in with a story that will keep them interested and keep them guessing from day to day or week to week. And at the same time, you also want to become savvy with the social network, like Facebook and so forth, Twitter, so that you can promote yourself online and, and uh, create a Facebook page for your comic and, and you know, do, do whatever advertising that you can afford or feel is necessary on your page to reach as many people as possible and, uh, you know, direct people to your page. We also found that making uh, videos for YouTube we did this both for ElfQuest and Mask. They were, they were semi-animated and had a musical background and a narration. And, and uh, we basically explained, uh, you know, for example, what ElfQuest the final quest is or, or what Mask of the Red Death is. And um, YouTube is really, really valuable because you can, you can put buzzwords into the video that will attract people who had never heard of your stuff before, but, but, but they will follow the buzzwords, like if someone's interested in yaoi, so we put yaoi on maps, and, and it just led uh, all these yaoi fans who had never heard of it right to mask. So yeah, you've got, you've got to become savvy about how to work the social network and how to um, manage a website. And also, uh, eventually, you want to uh, monetize it by maybe uh, adding PayPal and asking for donations or for a specific amount in order for people to be able to read your pages. But that, that comes after you've established your audience a little bit. Yeah, I think when you get close to like 10,000 hits a day, you can pretty much pay for your print run on your yeah. comics. This is what I did. Yeah. Once I got up to like a consistent 10,000 a day, I started putting them in book form. And they would pay for themselves. And then the rest I would take to conventions and sell and be all profit. Are you wanting to be a uh, web comic artist? I have a lot of friends who want to. Yeah. So I, I, I just want to like advice for them. Because a lot of people have really great ideas. Don't quit yeah. your day job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be willing to work two full-time jobs. Mm -hmm. One that pays and one that does not. Mm -hmm. 
and that you have to be willing to do that for a long time. But uh, there's a site called Project Wonderful you can tell them about as well. It's an advertising site, and it will uh, you bid on advertising space, and sometimes it's just two to you know two cents a day or something, but it can go up to a couple of dollars a day. But they'll put your banner on another website, and you can choose the sites to put it on. So you can do it on sites that are kind of like your sites. If you do a superhero site, you put it on another superhero site. So, as a matter of fact, when I was doing We Shadow, since it was also, uh, you know, based on William Shakespeare's uh, Midsummer Night's Dream, I would put them on like literary sites as well, you know, because I thought it might spark their interest. Any any manga sites or anything? yeah, some manga sites and anything. like I remember one literary site I, I put uh, it said uh, Puck to Tanya Oberon. What have they been up to? And that's, that was the ad. Yeah. And, and for any of you who aren't familiar with Sonny's own drawing style, he really has managed to capture the manga drawing style with, you know, the big-eyed <laughs> style and, and all of the, the tropes like uh, chibi and so forth. It, it is, his work is really humorous a lot of the time. It depends on what I'm working on. When I, did, when I worked for Tokyo Pop originally, what I sent them was a very American style for We Shadows. And the editor came back and he said, uh, I just went to a meeting with all the editors, they looked at your work, and they got you, everyone split down the middle. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, we were wanting to go in a more American style. And half the people are saying, this is perfect for that. And the other half are saying, no, it's too different from the manga we do. And I said, well, what if I did the pages over in a manga style? And he said, can you draw in a manga style? I said, dude, I stare at anime all day for my day job. I could probably fake it. And he goes, okay, we'll give it a shot. So, and that's exactly what I did. I sort of faked it. But I came up with something that I thought looked manga enough. And he said, to his credit, he wasn't trying to steer me either way. He just said, how do you feel about it? You know, now that you're drawing it in a manga style. And I said, well, now that I've done it this way, I don't want to do it any other way. And he goes, oh, good, because everybody loves it. If you can stay with this, you'll get it published. And I went, okay, let's do it. And then I had six months of negotiation, so I had plenty of time to actually develop what I felt was my own manga style. And uh, the Publishers Weekly said it's a combination of Clamp and Tex Avery. Yeah. I said, I'll take that. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's a good uh, yeah. analogy. And you have a question. Um, actually, I actually have two quick questions. Um, first off, um, when you were voicing the original Tom on Tsunami, um, what has been some of your like favorite moments, either like, just doing the voice itself or like, my favorite moment behind the scenes was uh, I was very green. You know, I'd only done Krillin at that point, but uh, Tokyo. I don't know, <laughs> I've worked for too many companies. Uh, Cartoon Network really liked what I did with Krillin and asked me to audition for Tsunami Tom. So when I got the part, um, I didn't know what, how to negotiate a real contract, and um, <coughs> the guy said, um, "All right, we're going to talk about you know how much we're going to pay you and everything." And I said, "Well, right now I'm getting paid by the hour at, at Funimation." And he laughed at me. He said, uh, really? And I went, yeah, is that bad? He goes, well, we usually pay by the season. And then he went, well, if you're used to getting paid by the hour, we'll, we'll pay you by the hour. I went, okay. And he said, how does $300 an hour sound? And I went, yes. <laughs> $300 an hour sounds great. And he laughed again. He went, okay, it's $300 then. And then he started talking about the things that would be required of me. And then I guess he started feeling guilty because I was such a noob. And he went, you know what, I'm going to give you $400 an hour. And I went, okay. <laughs> and then I thought about it. I was like, what could I have gotten out of this guy? A thousand bucks an hour? I don't know. And I was just like, 300 bucks an hour? Drinks are on me. And for the entire run of my tsunami, drinks were on Sunny. That was an amazing year and a half, yeah. And then just the second thing if you had the chance to actually work on any other like web comic with like no limitations or anything whatsoever, what would it be and why? Probably ElfQuest. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the ElfQuest though. Uh, I don't know. I really like creating my own stuff. I mean, ElfQuest is the only one I really grok to. You know, it wasn't my own. And I really grok on ElfQuest. In the future, you may do your own ElfQuest story. She keeps saying that she wants me to do ElfQuest when she's done with it, and I, I would totally do it. Yeah. You know? I, I don't think I would do it solo. I think I'd have to have you and Richard hold my hand through it. Oh, we'd be hovering. Good. <laughs> What's your question? 
You could choose how you were going to be remembered for either voice work or directing or being a comic book artist. Which one would you pick? I don't know, it's hard to say. I mean, I really just like art, and I'm an art whore. If, um, <laughs> if I see somebody doing art, I want to at least try it. You know, That's why I'm in a band right now as well. Uh, because, yeah, I saw some people in a band, I went, I can do that. And so I started a band. As a matter of fact, I was playing keyboards in my friend Tom's band, and I had arranged for that band to be playing at a convention. Well, Tom and I had a falling out, and I said, I don't want to play in your band anymore. So... I stopped playing his band, but I still had this booking for this convention. So I uh, said, hey, um, I'm not in that band anymore, but I'm in another band that I front and sing for. Um, would you like to have that one instead? And they said, oh, yeah, that's fine, right? So then I called up my friend Neil, who's a composer, and I said, Neil, do you think you and I could come up with an album in six months? And he goes, I think so. And I said, well, if we can, we can make some money at a convention. He goes, okay. And so we <laughs> sat down and started writing songs in six months and came up with an album. Uh, it's The band is called White Girl. And if you go to whitegirlstudios.com, you can hear our album there. By the way, people who like Drossel from Black Butler, the London Bridge is falling down. We do our own version of that song on there. Our first rehearsal was on stage at the convention in front of everybody. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it went really well. <laughs> but we all we were all performers. It was me and my wife and Neil. We've all been uh, in theater and stuff like that. So we just pretended like we knew what we were doing and it seemed to go off okay. What convention is this and when? It was on a fine It was a couple of years ago. Do you know what it was called? I want to find this on YouTube. Yeah. Because I know this I think there. It's Missouri, huh? Oh huh. yeah. Yeah. There, nice. there's YouTube videos of that. Yeah there is. Just look up why, uh, Sunny Straight Wild. Sunny is a real renaissance man. It would be hard to remember him for, for any one thing. Yeah. That's what I would like to be remembered for, is just somebody who tried everything he could before he died. Just throw it against the wall and see what sticks. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. But I, you know, I think most people who are um, artistically inclined tend to be good in many areas, and it's just what area they rock to. Um, like... Oh, no, keep going. no, I think every well, even Wendy, you know, she she wrote music, you wrote books, and you it's it's not just drawing, and you were no, a dancer. I used, I used to be a belly dancer. Right. Oh. I mean, <laughs> and to me, I think art just comes from the same source, and then it's just how you're going to utilize it, you know. And every Funimation actor I know also does something else. We have people who have comedy troops, we have musicians, and they they run the gamut of creativity. Creativity is creativity. It's just how you want to apply it. That's right. And that's going to be on the tombstone. Uh, um, I just wanted to know if any of your characters <clears throat> were created from anyone like in your family or your friends. Like, were they based loosely on one of someone in your life? Actually, Wendy actually appears in <laughs> We Shadows Book One. Uh, because I talk about meeting the Queen of the Elves, who <laughs> took me to the, uh, the gates of fairy and deposited me there. <laughs> And uh, that actually kind of happened. It was based on reality. Yeah. And he took me to Gilroy, Texas. I'm uh, not just Gilroy. Gilroy, California. Gilroy, California. <laughs> and uh, where she was raised. Mm -hmm. And then he took me to, what was the forest? It's, it's Mount Madonna. We have, we have big redwoods. Uh, a big redwood forest not far from the town where I grew up. And Sonny told me he had never seen a forest before. Oh, you know, little Texas... Texas. See yeah. woods. We don't He's have forests. See woods, <laughs> but a real tall, deep green, mossy forest. No. So uh, we made sure uh, when we were uh, up north once that, to take Sonny to Mount Madonna, and it was amazing to watch his reaction to it because Sonny has a lot of fairy energy in him. He really is Puck. <laughs> <laughs> He's Puck. I played Puck. He played Puck. It was about 50 pounds ago, but I played Puck. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so just turning him loose in the forest and watching him, because he's like, oh, oh. You know, he's like, I'm home. I'm home. And, then he, and then he headed straight for the most tangly thickets in the forest. You know, he seemed to just love all the tangled stuff. Like the, the natural archways yeah. and stuff that uh, nature makes. Yeah. The fairy yeah. gates. So, so once you saw the forest, it, it probably changed your Well, I went home. Work. When I got home, I, 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 had, I woke up, you know, in the half state. Like I was almost awake. And I heard this sweet voice singing. If you 
want to come inside, speak the name and block the eyes. And I went, what's that name? <laughs> and I was like, that sounds like a spell. Yeah. And so I put that in We Shadows too. It's like, that's how, so the story, the book, the introduction starts off with me talking about my experiences uh, working with some vocal wizards and how our, our, our uh, combined power yell shook the world at one point. Wow. And it was sort of a reflection of my life just blown up. And then I talked about going to, by the, the fairy queen, I mean the elf queen taking me to the fairy land, and then waking up with that song. And I said, well, what are you waiting for? Speak the name, fairy, and block your eyes. Mm -hmm. And then when you do this, you see this hand come up like this, and all these feathers fly off of the, of the hands. And that's when the book begins. That's when we go to fairy. So yeah, it's kind of based on reality, you know? So don't ever think any ideas you have are too weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get, get weirder than mine. <laughs> yes. Two things. If you ever had the opportunity, would you make a contract with uh, Viz Media? Uh, oh, Viz, manga? Viz Manga? <laughs> Viz Manga. I've already done that a lot. I have done that a couple of times. With ma Viz Manga? Uh, no, no. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, would you try to strike up a deal with Viz Manga? I guess if, if I had the time to do something and they had a good enough deal for me. Uh, and uh, Marvel or DC? Oh, uh, hmm. <laughs> I would have to say Dark these, Horse. These days. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been a Dark Horse guy, though. Well, I had to pick the broadest options. But between Marvel and DC, I don't know, some of both. Are really, it's about equal. DC is still so conservative. Right. Yeah, they really are. Yeah. And how many 52s can we have? <laughs> 52? Yeah. Um, how, how do you feel about Rich series? Dragon Ball Z abridged? Yeah. I think it's hilarious. Right. <laughs> Krillin owned count. Do you know about this? Yes. Every time Krillin gets his butt kicked, there's this Krillin owned count that comes up. <laughs> adds another point to it. As a matter of fact, when, uh, when I sang the Dragon Ball Z Kai theme uh, on YouTube, people were going, Krillin owned count minus one now. Ah. Nice. Thank you. Oh, have you guys heard that? Singing the Dragon Ball Z thing. Oh, can you please oh, sing God. Dragon Ball? Oh, I'm doing music right here. Yeah. Can you do? Can you drink? No, after screaming all day. Okay. But all you right. can go to go to YouTube and just yeah. look at Sunny Straight Dragon Ball Z kind okay. of thing. And what I lo I love the words to that song. You know, that it's so inspirational, and then the way he sings it is. Yeah. Don't stop! Don't stop! We're locked down. Don't <laughs> stop! There's so much to be found. I, that's another problem. I can't remember the words. <laughs> we can find paradise. All we have to do is go. Free and show. Free your soul. That's free it. your soul. See, there, you get to free your soul. That's it. I'm actually going to Tsunami in the fall, actually. Oh, cool. So. Nice. Well, now, I did say that if you had something to, for me to sign, I would give you the last 10 minutes for that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we're up to right now. Mm -hmm. If you guys want me to sign anything, like I said, only for this panel, it's free. So come up here and I'll sign it. If you want to buy one of my posters, they are 20 usually, but I'll do them for 10. And thank you for letting me sit in. Thank you for joining me. No, you were awesome. Thank you. I don't want to like nice. knock this down. Is this? Yes. Just... Oh, I like that. Let's get over here. <laughs>